my name is Jubilee. I was named after the concept in the Bible, the Jubilee, where every 50 years the land was returned to the 12 tribes, people and land were set free from indebtedness. I use that to get her to grounding a few times. It has been my name since birth. I figured out how to dismantle capitalism and create a world that works for everyone while laying in bed suffering from my disabilities. I couldn't communicate this big, beautiful idea, so I went forward and made it to the best of my ability. 2023, I was already on strike due to my disability and due to no one fucking listening to me on either my disability or my I Know How to Save the World project. And I encountered an internet narcissistic bully named Allison Priestley, who I entangled myself with, um, resulting in 17 months of relentless bullying of my friends that I had come to know and accumulating in her smear campaign that got me put away for three weeks in the mental health hospital here, which was no help to me. Zero help. I didn't have a crisis. They didn't step in when I was in a mental health crisis and help me in any way, shape, or form. They saw a spiritual awakening, needed to label it as mental health crisis, and now they have no idea what box to put me in. Even now, it's breaking their little brain, all the little psychologist brains. I have the signs and symbols. I have the evidence from God that we are here for a deep, meaningful purpose that connects all of humanity, all of history, that it's coming through me, you take that up with God. All right, here is a TikTok. I am starting to watch the lecture series that I put in the description. Who knows if I'll get through it, but talking about the Hebrew Bible that she references, it'll be behind her in the in the conversation. She'll be able to explain women in the Bible much better than I can. Um, the Bible is a lesson that humans haven't changed. Humans have been the same since the dawn of time. We will be the same forevermore. We've created technology that can kill each other very fast, very easily. We have put the goober nuggets in charge, the sociopathic, narcissistic people is what I call goober nuggets, in charge of our religions, in charge of our state, in charge of every, nearly every corporation. We have incentivized greed while having this purity whitewashed culture that comes from Judeo-Christianity that, that caused white supremacy or white supremacy caused it to go, who knows? They are little, little bedfellows, Christianity and white supremacy. This is why they turned people who were clearly not white into white and then spread it across the globe. Most of the most horrific atrocities humans have committed have been done in the name or, or, or cited along the Bible. Slavery, they okayed with the Bible. Horrific inter-transatlantic slavery. God's on our side. Look at our skin. We're white. Residential schools, stealing children, committing genocide. And now we're watching genocide unfold in the Middle East, watching what colonization does, what land ownership does. The Bible, my understanding post-October 7th, when I took a different view lens, I grew up an evangelical Christian, read the Bible as a child, rereading Bible stories, watching them on YouTube, I realized the Bible does not have a single sibling pair who get along. While they're following their, their daddy's rules under the household, dad's in charge, Sky Daddy's in charge of all of us. The siblings don't even get along. They have jealousy. They sell each other into slavery. They commit murder. They don't even get along with their siblings, let alone their distant, distant cousins. We can have a better, beautiful world when we meta, when we roll out in any way and say, oh, we don't need to shove my religion down everyone's throat. I need to have trust in God that God will allow everyone to have their own journey and needing everybody to feel the exact same way about my religion as I do is not faith in that religion. It's exactly the effing opposite, actually. It is a unbelief in God. If you need to force everybody else in your religion to wear something, to act in a certain way, that's the log in your eye. Well, well there's a sliver in somebody else's, a teaching of Jesus. Humans humaning, that's what the Bible is. Anyway, here is the one that I, um, the whole reason this is up. Church is nothing but a place of spiritual death. 
Before just quickly, guys, I don't think I have mentioned it. July 15th. This is on July 15th of this year. July 15th is the day that True Lies came out, the day my Jewish grandfather died, and a bunch of other things, including, I believe, the uh, Boeing became a corporation. Like, I, I haven't looked at the list before this, so that's just off of memory. But um, mm -hmm. July 15th, signs and symbols. Or women. It's a place where women go to die in order to build men up. Women are not, is nothing but a place of spiritual death for women. It's a place where women go to die in order to build men up. Women are naturally spiritual because they are the creators of life. That's God's whole big thing, right? The, the reason that people worship God is because he created life. Women do that millions of times every single day. While I'm speaking, women all over the world are doing the thing that the Bible ascribes as a godlike miracle, which is the creation of life. The Bible even says that God first formed Adam like out of clay or whatever. That's how a baby is formed in the womb and it's formed and then it's given life. Women do that. So you realize men literally just took what women do and ascribed it to a man and then, then made it an object of worship. I'll realize that before that people did used to worship women for their ability to create life and to sustain life with nothing but their own body. Women are naturally spiritual because of that. This is a depiction of Jesus's side wound, you know, the one where they stabbed him and like water and blood came out. Does that remind you of anything? Something that women actually go through every single month? Yeah, they really just copy and pasted like women's attributes onto a male God and gave those attributes power, but not to women. Men are the ones who are not naturally spiritual. Men are the ones who don't have a spiritual bone in their body. That's why they find access to spirituality through extrinsic actions and not through an intrinsic relationship. So there's actually a Yale course online that you can take with Dr. Christine Hayes. And my husband and I watched this like when we were deconstructing from Christianity, basically a course about uh, the literature of the Hebrew Bible. And it also dispels some of the most common misconceptions about the Bible. She talks about how the books, like we're all never supposed to go together. Like the fact that we have like a single Bible that's made up of all of these different and diverse books and pieces of literature, like doesn't really quite make sense. But the most important thing that she addresses in this video series is how communion with God used to be seen as a personal thing and endeavor. It wasn't a place where you had to go somewhere or like make a sacrifice or do any of those things. Like people used to just, you know, have this connection with God and how basically the stories of the Bible serve to introduce a patriarchy into the world. And it has to do with forming like nation states and it has to do with war and it has to do with control of land, et cetera, et cetera. And so most of the things that you see in the Bible were put in it to somehow exercise control of land, of reproduction, of people's customs, of you know what's fair and what's not fair. The idea is to present a narrative and then to be able to control the further narrative. And so that's how patriarchy was introduced into the idea of like this connection with a higher source. A middleman was invented. We are still today suffering the consequences of this. Uh, women especially because it was a middle man and not a middle woman also introduces this idea of god as like liberator and protector and patriarch versus just the source the source of everything it attempts to sort of like clean up god's image rehab the pr a little bit that basically what you're connecting with is not the source of life and where you came from what you're connecting with is a man in the sky who has a plan for everybody and for their life and then all the stories of God's plan, somehow, like 99% of them only include men in the Bible. Like the only people that God really actually has a plan for are men. And the plan that he has for women all looks exactly the same. Like women all have the same exact action plan from God, whereas men have these very like unique and interesting stories that are full of like conquests and victories and uh, women falling at their feet and whatnot. That again, just goes to show us that men are not inherently spiritual because what they tend to respond best to is taking orders and rising through the ranks based on how well they took those orders. And that's essentially the whole lesson of the Bible, right? Is if you obey God and you follow his commands and you follow his plan for your life, then everything is going to work out for you. The part that they don't tell you is that all of that still has to happen at somebody's expense. Like when the Israelites, when God was giving Israelites all this land and, you know, all this political power, they were literally slaughtering and killing other people. So what was God's plans for those people's life? You know, the spirituality that men gravitate towards is based on conquest, followership, armies, land treaties and agreements, assaulting, pillaging and graping of foreign women to like 
spread the word of God and all of this stuff. It's all basically based on conquests and is always happening at somebody else's expense. So that is not true spirituality. Spirituality is about your connection to the source and whatever that may mean to you. Like nobody gets to tell you what proper spirituality is because it's different and unique to every person. The thing that men have done with religion is the same thing that they do with everything else. They have perverted it. And by that, I mean, they have selected only certain parts of it that they want to keep the parts that make them happy, the parts that say there's an action and then there's a reward, not an action and a consequence, no, an action and a reward. That action can basically be anything, but God will turn it into a reward at the expense of somebody else. As long as you are a man in God's army, it's all like, it's all right there. It's all right there. Religion is not a place for women to thrive spiritually. Religion is a place for men who gain access to things that they didn't have access to before. Religion is the birthplace of the patriarchy. And the first thing that religion is going to try to take from you as a woman is your intuition. It is like the single most important thing that you have because women have always been the easier gender to exploit and violate because of the ability to get pregnant and because of how much that is like a disabling event for women. And because of how disabling pregnancy can be to women, that's always been taken advantage of. So women have developed a very a natural intuition that warns them when they are in danger so that they can better survive. This is the first thing that the church takes away from you. The first thing that the church tells women is that they are somehow more sinful, like more easily led astray than men. And that's why they need to like sit down and be quiet. They need to obey men and defer to men and God is a man and God is a father. And, you know, if God thought that women were smart and naturally capable of leadership, then God would have been a woman, but he's not, he's a man. And yet somehow he has the ability to create life without a womb. He has the ability to you know, predict the future without that intuition that women have developed. He, you know, suffers and dies for us by bleeding out of a vagina shaped hole. I mean, it's all just too much. Like, it's all right there if you just really look at it and add it up. Oh, they just copy and pasted all of women's attributes onto a man and convinced women that that man was God and not actually women. The reason for that is to stop women from using their very natural propensity towards actual spirituality and their intuition that can help to keep them safe. Because the church doesn't need women to be safe. The church actually needs women to absorb the brunt of men's natural non-spiritual inclinations, which are abusive, which are selfish, prideful, boastful, all of that. Women exist in the church as padding for that. Women exist in the church to give men arbitrary spiritual power over somebody so that they can, just like in the patriarchy, take advantage of that invisible labor and of that invisible pain and blood and hurt and humiliation and all of that and use it to rise through the ranks of the other men in the church. That's why it works the way that it works, because men will always need wheelchair ramps in the form of women's invisible labor. And the church is one of the oldest and first places that this started happening. Once we developed the ability to sort of like think and reason and believe, and not only that, but to be able to tell each other lies with really high stakes, like eternal life or eternal damnation. So we as humans have this very unique relationship with reality where we can sort of like change it and shift it and then gaslight people about what reality actually is or isn't. And in the case of the church, this has just been done like, I don't want to say so well, but in the case of the church, they've really got this formula down pat because they've been able to gaslight so many women along the way, including the woman that my first video was in response to. Like she's definitely deeply in some kind of spiritual psychosis where she has been so convinced that she should replace her intuition with prophetic words from men, that she should replace her self-worth with laying her life down for a man, that she should replace fairness with unfairness and just turn a blind eye to that, that she should be poorly and unfairly treated, but that her husband should be unfairly treated, but like in a good way where he gets things that he doesn't deserve, like his family back after cheating on his pregnant wife for years and not even cutting ties with the affair partner right away and like doing all this crazy shit. And she still feels like she won a prize. That's because her intuition has been ground down to a stump about this big. That just can't, she just can't, she doesn't know what's going on. She's literally in a spiritual psychosis. And a lot of women experience this because they like hype themselves up so much. Just like men, they have actually killed their own spiritual connection off with the source. And all they're doing is just following arbitrary words, orders, and commands. And that's what religion is for. Thank you for coming to my hot take TED talk. Stay safe out there, ladies. I love you so much. Godspeed. I am. So it was just going to be the one 
but instead I found a second one by the same creator who I now follow uh, from June 25th. And this happens to be Allie's June 25th. So we're just going to play this one because while I was finding like spiritual psychosis, Allie has claimed everyone's in spiritual psychosis, including me said I would unalive my child to frame her all over her YouTube channel saying I would neglect my child, run a smear campaign to get me put away for three weeks, take away for my daughter June 25th, I've already I'm back home, right? After she's already cost five different mothers calls from CPS over the last 17 months. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I don't remember what this video says, uh, but I'm pretty sure it'll it'll go together and then we'll watch the second one from the other one. I am autistic and it's not that I can't read social cues. It's actually that everyone else is fake. You guys all lie to each other and then expect me to not point it out and then you say that i'm socially awkward <laughs> like literally i have had so many problems my entire life because i can't not be weirdly honest and i'm not saying that as like an, an arrogant thing it's awful i'm trying to like shut my mouth i'm trying to not be the texting bandit <laughs> when I just said, when I decide to shoot off some texts, oh, you're going to hear some things you didn't want to hear. <laughs> and it's well, so many times. Yeah, things you don't want to hear, like her on her own birthday, texting Brian racist, ableist, horrific things about his partner, who was one of her, her victims for all of 2023 and beyond. The texting bandit, right, on October 3rd, where she, uh, before October 3rd, but also on October 3rd was our last exchange on Instagram, right, after we had our one-on-one -on -one conversation on October 1st, where she just interrupted me the whole time, showed narcissistic traits, claims autistic traits. Anyway, we, we watch enough of this one. I'm going to put on the rest of the, of the preview. And just to add to the discourse that women have been having around romantic love being fake and invented in order to trap women, I just want to say not only are you correct, it's actually even worse than that. Because men didn't even make this up. As per usual, they are just copying somebody else's idea. Animals have had the ability to mate for life as a survival tactic for a long time before men ever caught on to the fact that that could be a good survival tactic. And because men's laziness and selfishness truly knows no bounds, they took it one step further. Because you see, animals who mate for life, they offer each other very much a value and survival proposition for the male animals. That's not a survival proposition for the female animals. You have to understand this. As a woman, I need you to really to keep this in your mind at all times. The female species of a population is naturally going to be well protected and taken care of because it is responsible for the reproduction of the entire species. Animal communities where the male animals don't contribute anything to the community but genetic material and or perhaps sometimes violence in a setup where the males are predisposed to be, you know, violent and domineering and high testosterone or whatever, in most of those communities, they only keep one or two around for that reason. And now we can tell, we can look at statistics and we can tell that human males are very violent indeed. And we can tell by looking at other statistics that unlike the males of those species that mate for life, human males um, are also not good at parenting. They're not good at raising and protecting their offspring, which is typically the value proposition in a mate for life type relationship. And yet we still try to mate for life. Why? Why? That's because women are not given a choice. Because up until very recently, and even when I say this, I'm only talking about America and a lot of countries, this is still not an option for women, but it wasn't until recently that women could have independence of their own at all. And it is for that reason, because men want the benefits of mating for life with someone without providing those benefits in return. That's why they have made moving about the world so difficult for women, but almost like no matter what, there's almost no way to correctly move about the world as a woman. And that's because the men don't want us to figure out that we don't have to mate for life with them if they are bringing nothing to that table. And I'm not joking, look it up. Every single animal that mates for life has an equal parenting part. Species where the male animal gets to just sort of run around and F whatever he wants, whenever he wants, there's usually only one of them. That's usually a community of female animals that have agreed to keep this man around, even though he's useless, so that they can continue to procreate their species. 
And frankly, given the statistics, once again, given the trends, that is at best what most human men should ever hope for, right? Is to be the town bicycle in a community full of women that all don't mind sharing a man because the only thing that that involves is sharing his genetic material. You're not actually sharing any childcare duties. You're not sharing anything else, really. Everything still falls on you and the man and the man gets to run around and F whoever he wants. Women are naturally kind of set against that. They don't want that because that's not useful to them. That's not useful. In nature, you have to be useful if you want to be kept alive. So men have gone out of their way to make themselves useful by hoarding resources and by taking rights away from women. So that way they can be useful in being a provider, providing women with resources and giving women back their rights. Do you see where I'm going with this, right? Like most men would not hang in a mate for life kind of situation because they are useless and they don't want to do any of that stuff. I believe the stat is that seven or 8,000 years ago, only one man would procreate for like every 17 women. So hypergamy, right? Basically the lion setup where there's an alpha male, AKA the only male, that's been our natural proclivity as women for a very long time because men are not worth mating for life with. And frankly, after resources got introduced into the equation, it only got worse for men because now women could very clearly see who was bringing what to the table. And, uh, and those odds of men reproducing and those statistics and stuff didn't really improve until just a few hundred years ago because romantic love was invented as something that women should want. And the worst thing to me about romantic love as it pertains to our human species is that it excuses men from the actual responsibility of what the mating for life setup is actually supposed to provide, especially to the mother and to the children of the species in this scenario, which are humans. Like the worst part about the whole setup is how badly and negatively it affects mothers and children specifically. It's not good for the survival of our species. That's where y'all need to understand all of these, all of these movements are coming from these 4B, whatever. All of these movements are coming from the fact that women are figuring out what nature has known all along. Human men are only useful to human women if they can withhold something from them first, like resources or safety. In any other case, women are like, no, I'd rather do my own thing because you are useless. Again, the animals that mate for life, that is a survival tactic. And men have gone ahead and bypassed that survival tactic by inventing resources and laws and money. And the first thing that they did was withhold all of that stuff from women so that they could create a different kind of forced mating for life situation to trap women, to trap women. It's not the men who get trapped by marriage. And they have to very carefully control this like push and pull of things. It's like, you wanna give women just enough rights so that you can exploit them as fully as possible. But the thing is giving women freedom and giving women rights always causes women to start backing away from the men and towards independence and away from all of these notions of romantic love and, and whatnot, because men just don't bring that to the table. They don't bring romantic, unconditional love to the table. In fact, if anything, they use love as an excuse to treat women poorly. Instead of being like, I love you, that's why I work extra hard and like whatever. It's like, no, I love you, that's why I did something stupid. Or just give me another chance. And it's always used to actually manipulate women. It's useless to women and they always figure this out. And they always start backing away and trying to get away from the men. And the men catch up and they do something about it. Like right now, our laws are being rescinded. It's because human males are trying to force and a non-consensual mate for life type of situation from human women. So don't fall for it, ladies. Stay safe out there. I love you so much. Godspeed. My last words of thought are just gonna be, um, men, before they're 25, before their prefrontal cortexes are fully formed, are joining armies and killing people in the name of God, in the name of country, Right? Because if you wait until the prefrontal cortexes are formed, they might not be so happy to die for somebody else's wealth and power. Right? But they do. They do sign up for that. Women are seen of as losing value at the age of 30, even before 30. We're supposed to have babies before our prefrontal cortex is formed. Almost every cult, every baby making cult, of which men at most of the religions are, disposed to get women pregnant long before they're 25, before they can think, right? Fully think about the full impact of their actions. Meanwhile, men are in charge of the household. They get in charge of decide how much sex and how many babies there are. The patriarchy is a recipe 
for women enslavement. And by registering it, we can create something better. And that is what we are doing on this channel. Like and subscribe. <laughs>